Castle. What do you got for us, Chris? Well, I'm awake, and I've got breaking news for you. We have our matchups in the college football playoff. It is going to be number one LSU jumping Ohio State. LSU taking on Oklahoma in one semifinal. And the other semi, oh, man, 13-0 against 13-0. Ohio State against Clemson. We have not been told yet. Which game will be played where? I would presume the LSU-Oklahoma game would be the Peach Bowl in Atlanta to reward LSU for the number one seed and stay close to home. That would make Ohio State-Clemson the Fiesta Bowl. We are going to have a complete breakdown on this in just a few moments for the next 90 minutes or so. We've got Jerry Palm, Dennis Dodd standing by here in our Fort Lauderdale studios. We'll be joined by Barrett Salee, Chip Patterson, Tom Fornelli of the Cover 3 podcast. And we'll also check in with our Vegas guys as well on line projections, line movements, picks against the spread, over-unders, all that good stuff as we get ready for the college football playoff. LSU jumping Ohio State in the final college football playoff rankings. They get the number one overall seed and get to avoid playing Clemson in that semifinal. Much more on this coming up in just a few seconds here on CBS Sports HQ. Don't go anywhere. This is the college football playoff bracket and a big move today. LSU, number one, jumping Ohio State, a team that had been number one the last couple of weeks. And Ohio State, a, a good win over Wisconsin, but LSU so dominant this season, especially in that SEC championship game against Georgia yesterday. They get the number one seed, and they get to avoid Clemson. That's the key there. LSU taking on Oklahoma, while Ohio State has to play the defending national champion Clemson Tigers in the other semifinal the national championship game taking place january 13th note the date there december the 28th for those national semifinals we are going to break it all down with uh, our cast of college football experts jerry palm is here dennis dodd is here i'm chris hassel thank you for joining us we'll be visited by the guys in the desert in just a little bit from sports line but we got to break down the move that was made today we knew who the four teams were going to be we just didn't know who was going to be number one what's your guys take dennis i'll start with you on ohio state being jumped by lsu yeah it couldn't work out better for lsu being number one playing in atlanta i think that's going to be a de facto home game for them even though clemson is close um it's gonna they're they're gonna they've been away so long they've never been number one in this thing and then they go to new orleans if they win the game it's going to be a tremendous advantage for them i think they did it yesterday with the defense I think the committee needed to see that because they had been outscoring teams for most of the season. It completely shut down Georgia, uh, a limited Georgia, admittedly, with the, with the injuries and suspensions. But I think that pushed them over the top. Yeah, it must have because really before that, and even still, Ohio State was the most dominant team on both sides of the ball for all 13 games of this season. Uh, the Ohio State's defense did not play a single fourth quarter snap with less than a 10-point lead all season long. Amazing. I mean, they, they, all the games were over after three quarters, and obviously LSU had a few struggles, but LSU has some really high-quality wins, four wins over teams that are going to be in the top, uh, you know, 15 of the rankings, and, you know, and they just destroyed Georgia. That's, that was the one game that really, you know, obviously sent a message to the committee. LSU played two games this season, decided by one score. Ohio State didn't play a single game all season, decided by 10 points or less. They beat everybody by double digits. So what was the difference here? As you look at the two resumes, was it the fact that Ohio State fell behind 14-0 to Wisconsin early on? Was that the deciding factor? That it might, must, have, been, it that might have, been. have been it. It must yeah. have been. Uh, because uh, LSU never had a deficit that large this season. But even still, that game was over in the fourth quarter. You know, Once Ohio State scored to start the fourth quarter, that game was over. So... Uh, yeah, but, you know, LSU, a terrific season, a fantastic offense. By the way, they had three games with one score or less because Texas was a seven-point game, and then um, LSU and Alabama each inside of seven. So, but it's still, I mean, those are all great wins, and, and they beat Florida as well, and, you know, those are, uh, the, the, these two teams, hard to separate. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see how Rob Mullins rationalizes this because in the end, they can do anything they want. Right. It, can, it can be eye tests. It can be strength of schedule. In 2014 or 15, the first year of the playoff, they jumped Ohio State from six to three. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they were three point. Wisconsin was a three point favorite in that Big Ten championship game that year. Ohio State wins 59 to nothing and mm -hmm. gets in and goes from there. And and this is actually kind of another example of that. I mean, the the committee this committee has shown over time, not this year's necessarily right. recency bias. I mean that and this is a recency bias move. You know, they saw LSU dominate what the team they had number four. 
while Ohio State struggled with a team that they had beaten by 31 earlier in the season, and, uh, and therefore that's, that's the change. And Oklahoma, by the way, moving from six to four. Of course, it, we would have had a lot more drama today had Utah taken care of business Friday night in the Pac-12 championship game, but that wasn't the case. So we, we had a 99% feeling that Oklahoma was going to be the number four team. They're not going to release uh, five through 25 until later on today when we get the, the New Year's six and all that. But when you look at these matchups, let's start first with, with Oklahoma facing LSU. I doubt many people are going to give Oklahoma much of a chance. They're 0-3 all-time in the CFP. They won't, and I don't think the matchup's very good. LSU's playing at a high level. I keep coming back to Jalen Hurts. I don't know if he'll get a Heisman finalist invite because of the turnovers. Baylor has 30, 30 takeaways this year. Six of them alone are from Jalen Hurts, 20% of the total. And he's really hurt. And that'll, that'll be a thing against LSU's defense, which now looks like it's competitive. So, no, I don't think it'll be close. It's probably a double-digit game with the best player in the game, Joe Burrow. and all. I, I think uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire should get the uh, Heisman uh, invitation right now. So it's, it's clearly LSU. Well, the thing about Oklahoma is how many times has Oklahoma taken the field where the other offense was better? Never, mm -hmm. right? But they will in this game. I think right. LSU's offense, as good as Oklahoma's offense is, LSU's offense is better and their defense is definitely better. Uh, and I, yeah, it's a, it's a bad matchup for Oklahoma. I'm not sure there was a good matchup for Oklahoma among this group of teams, but this is not a, this is a bad matchup. I just, I just, something just hit my head. Jamar Chase, their best receiver at LSU, I think it's six three six four. Oklahoma has a starting cornerback who's five nine. And start with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, start there. Right. Well, listen. Oklahoma is going to likely be a double-digit favorite here. Not many giving them a chance. Jalen Hurts wearing that chip on his shoulder. That chip's going to get even bigger. And when you look at the defense, the last three weeks, they haven't given up more than 24 points. So they have turned the corner defensively at least, right? Yes. Well, giving up 24 points to Baylor is not going to do the job. That kind of defensive effort is not going to do the job against LSU. LSU will put 40 on you. And that, that puts a lot of pressure on an Oklahoma offense that, while being very good, lately has been turning the ball over. I mean, they have to play mistake-free football to have any chance. I, I was at the game yesterday. I was at the Big 12 game yesterday. And there is a, a visible difference in the defense. They play more physical. Not many people know they went from 10 to 1 in uh, total defense in the Big 12. Now, that's a bit of a world's tallest midget thing. But <laughs> they were, they're, they're, they're better. And Alex Grinch has them li lining up better. Now, can they stop an elite team like LSU? I don't know. But they, they are hitting people in the mouth. Well, it's going to be another matchup between LSU and a top-ranked team. And they've obviously cleared every hurdle with flying colors so far this season. And uh, Dennis mentioned it off the top. What a three games this could be for LSU. Atlanta for the <laughs> SEC championship game, Atlanta for the college football playoff, and then right at home in New Orleans for the national championship game. It sets up very nice for the LSU Tigers as we take a look at the five top ten teams that they have beaten this season. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew this was coming. Texas is not a top 10 team. <laughs> they were then. We do not. So right. what? The time Here's what they're ranked the second week of the season. That's just stupid. We don't need to use SID numbers. LSU's legitimate accomplishments are plenty. We don't need to puff up Texas to make them look well, it, better than they are. It's the and same fact, thing with Clemson. That's arguably a bad performance because they only beat a team that's 7-5 seven and five by 7 points. Well, let's give, let's give them credit for taking the game. Oh, yeah, I it agree. It was a non-conference yeah. game. I'm just saying, Joe let's Burrow not pretend said, they're anything other than 7-5. and right. five. Joe Burrow set the school passing record, you know, that day. That was kind of his coming out, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and Texas was mediocre. But yeah, I mean, let's, let's say yeah. five ranked teams, at least. Mm -hmm. We know that, at least. Yeah. It's better than Clemson. And one of those oh, yeah. uh, ranked <laughs> exactly. teams that Clemson played was Texas A&M. I think they were 12th at the time. But we know Texas A&M yeah, is, another seven is and far five from teams. a ranked team yeah. uh, at the end of the season. Let's move on to the matchup in the Fiesta Bowl. And this is going to be the one everybody cannot wait for. It's the Clemson Tigers. They've been somewhat doubted just because of the schedule. Now they get the first real test since last year's national championship game against Ohio State. I just want to see how good that Clemson defense is because I think rounding into shape as it went on, it was starting to get as good as it was last year with all those draft picks on the defensive line. Ohio State is elite. Je is elite. Jeff Okuda, the cornerback, is an All-American. Chase Young, maybe a Heisman finalist. We know about him. Um, they're good up and down the line. Malik Harrison is going to maybe be an All-American. These guys run, get to the ball, they're tough. I, it, it's as much as anything a defensive matchup to me. Not necessarily low scoring. I want to see the defenses tested. Yeah, well, and we know. I mean, Ohio State's defense has been tested. And Clemson's has not. And that, that's really the only thing about this team is that 
I mean, we know they're the defending champions. That we know they're they're lights out much better than everybody they played. And North Carolina gave them a scare, but you know that's pretty much it. Uh, but when they came out number five in those first rankings, that the chip went on the shoulder. Well, the shoulder pads, I guess. <laughs> and then uh, I saw and, and they there. have played though very well ever since. But this is going to be a level of team that they have not seen in almost 12 months. And it'll be interesting to see what happens, you know, when they finally get punched in the face by a team that is at least athletically their equal. You're going to have both head coaches, I think, going into this game saying that we are, we are being doubted. We're yes. the underdog. Nobody believes in us. Because you have Ohio State falling right. from one to two yep. and ending up with a much tougher matchup in the summer. I, I, I am willing to bet, though, that Ohio State's defense is going to actually have to make a play in the fourth quarter this time. <laughs> oh, I think <laughs> so, yeah, because they, they haven't done much of that. they yeah. game where there's less than a ten-point lead. Unless Clemson's Clems way ahead. We'll see. Yeah, right. Did right. Wisconsin show us anything as far as how to attack an Ohio State team? Sh I mean, was, was there anything that Clemson or someone else can take I, I think Ohio State had a hard time having their attention you know, yeah. their attention in that game they were going to be in anyway right mm -hmm. um, and when it hit it hit big you know it's like oh I guess we ought to go ahead and win this game um, you know they had some different wrinkles offensively Wisconsin did but Jack Cohn is not going to beat you and when Jonathan Taylor can they've shut him down yeah. twice now yeah. 23 27 yards in the first yeah. meeting and then last night so it was yeah it, it was about time for them to wake up when, uh, we're going to get the, the lines on these games in, in just a little bit, and we're going to talk with our guys from Sportsline in Las Vegas. But when you when you look at the matchup, Ohio State slightly favored yeah, this game? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just because of be. you know, the, the level of accomplishment that they've, they've put together this season. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you ignore Clemson at your peril. This is, I mean, they're the defending national champion. They're a very talented team that has not had a chance to really showcase what they can do against better opposition. And, uh, you know, they're perfectly capable of winning this thing. Wow, how about that? Clemson minus one and a half is the opening spread. Now, the fact that we thought Ohio State might be the favorite might mean that that line's going to shift. I mean, we're the public here. We, we might be thinking Ohio State, and then we'll see where the money goes on this. But that's according to Westgate right now, the opening line, Clemson minus one and a half. What's your thought? I've, I've said this for a while. Clemson has a scheduling agreement with the ACC. They're not an ACC team. And I don't mean to disparage the ACC. They should be, Clemson should be in the SEC. Mm -hmm. That's how they run their program. That's how they spend their money. That's how they recruit. So anything said about Clemson has to come with that. Well, they play in the ACC, but they're an elite team that can win this whole thing. You know, it's funny. Ohio State, I always joke that Ohio State's the Big Ten's SEC team. Because yeah. they're, they're, it's the same kind of a it's thing. It's the same. They, I've they made that comparison. A different, yeah. People have been asking me, why can't Michigan beat them? It's because Ohio State is just operating at a different level Head and shoulders. organizationally right now. And so, what, But the thing to me, what could be the difference in this game is a quarterback. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, to me, is a better quarterback than Justin Fields, and he's got experience in these situations that Fields just doesn't well, have. Well, Jerry, as you've been talking about that and talking up Trevor Lawrence, the line just went to two. Clemson minus two. A real <laughs> I time really right didn't here. think wow. I had that kind the of power. influence, but Nash, maybe I did. <laughs> People Would you agree with that, that he's the better quarterback? I mean, I know Fields has had a great season. I, I, I do, I do. Ohio State, over time, lately, has become a power running team. That's what Ryan Day wants to do. You saw it yesterday. J.K. Dobbins, in the last three games, has carried it 100 times, 33 times per game. That's what they want to lean on, run to set up the pass, not fancy. But when he does pass, he's very efficient. Justin Fields has had one of the historically great games, or great seasons in history. I look back 11 years, which is as far as I could go, no one's had a, a year when they threw 40 touchdown passes and one interception. It wasn't even close. Marcus Mariota, I think, in 14 went 42 and four. Not not pass efficiency number, just efficient that way. That's pretty significant. Okay, well we're going to break down much more of these matchups and get more reaction to LSU jumping Ohio State in the final college football playoff rankings. Up next, we're going to be joined by the Cover Three podcast, fellas. Don't go anywhere as we continue to break down the college football playoff.